This is part two of our Lewis structure drawing tutorial. We'll focus here on molecules with two atoms. If you're unfamiliar with the rules for drawing Lewis structures, you can refer to part one of this tutorial. So we're going to look at three compounds here and draw the Lewis structures of the molecule. We've got ammonia, we've got carbon dioxide, and we've got nitrate. And we'll draw the Lewis structure for each of those three molecules. So if we look at ammonia, we need to add up the valence electrons for each atom, the nitrogen and the hydrogen in that molecule. So we got one nitrogen in the molecule times five valence electrons for a total of five contribution from the nitrogen. For the hydrogen, there are three of them times one valence electron for a total of three contribution from the hydrogens. Adding that up, we get eight total valence electrons. Adding in three nitrogen-hydrogen bonds, that adds up to six electrons, leaving me with two valence electrons remaining. Turns out we need to evaluate the tet rule, and it turns out that the hydrogens are all happy with one bond or two electrons. The nitrogen has three bonds or six electrons, meaning it will need two more. And so we're safe to just add those two electrons as a non-bonding pair on the nitrogen. So doing that, non-bonding pair on the nitrogen, subtract that from our total, we get zero electrons left. And the octet rule is satisfied for each of the elements in that the nitrogen has eight and the hydrogen has two. For carbon dioxide, we've got one carbon, two oxygens, so one carbon times four valence electrons is four electrons from the carbon. For oxygen, there are two oxygens times six valence electrons for a total of 12. Adding that up, we get 16 total valence electrons to work with. We'll want to draw our skeleton, in which we've got a carbon single bonded to each oxygen, where the carbon being is the central atom. So that we take away four electrons, and that leaves us with 12. We'll want to evaluate the octet rule. Each oxygen needs six. The carbon needs four. So six plus six is 12 plus 16. That doesn't match our 12. So there's not enough electrons in the pool left to fill the octet on each atom with non-bonding electrons. We're four electrons short. So that's going to imply either one triple bond or two double bonds. Because of the symmetry of the molecule, we're going to use two double bonds. Doubling the bonds between the carbon and the oxygen takes away four more electrons, leaving us with a total of eight. We'll reevaluate the octet rule and see if doubling the bonds helped us. The carbon is fine because it has four bonds or eight electrons. Each oxygen has bonds or four electrons, so they need four more apiece for a total of eight. So now we have enough electrons to fill in our non bonding pairs. And when we do that, we get non bonding pairs on each oxygen. So eight total electrons in four different pairs. Subtracting that from our total gives us zero left. The octet rule is satisfied for each element, so we can say that is a correct structure for carbon dioxide. Lastly, we'll look at nitrate. Contribution from nitrogen. One nitrogen times five valence electrons is five. The oxygen's contribution three oxygen times six electrons for a total of 18. Adding that up, we get 23. That's an odd number, and typically you won't see an odd number, especially in compounds that obey the octet rule. Those would be free radicals because they'd have an unpaired electron. However, in this case, we haven't accounted for that charge right there, so let's account for that. Taking into account the negative one charge, 
we're going to add one electron, giving us a total of 24. So now we have an even number of electrons. So let's draw the structure. Adding in three nitrogen-oxygen bonds. That's a total of six electrons. Subtracting that from our total gives us 18 remaining. Let's evaluate okay. that rule. Each oxygen has one bond, so that means each one needs six more electrons. The nitrogen has three bonds, so that means it needs two more electrons. Six times three is 18, plus two is 20. I only have 18 electrons, though, so that puts us at a sh to being too short. We don't have enough of the octet, and, or two electrons short, implying that I am going to need to add a double bond. In this case, I'll put the double bond there. Subtract two electrons because I doubled the bond, leaving me with a total of 16. In this case, my choice of which bond to double was entirely arbitrary. Reevaluating the octet rule, each oxygen needs six. That I didn't do anything to. However, this one, since I doubled the bond, it only needs four. And the nitrogen has eight because it is showing four bonds. So six plus six is 12, plus four is 16, which is the number of electrons I have left. And so since we see that the number of electrons I need is equal to the number of electrons I have left, I can fill in those octets with non-bonding electrons. So filling it in, each of those electrons with the single bond has six electrons in three pairs. The one I only has two non-bonding pairs. I know that I put it, put it in brackets and indicated the charge on the polyatomic ion. But we take away the 16 electrons in the non-bonding pairs and it leaves us with nothing. The octet rules are satisfied for each element and so we're done. That's a correct structure. However, going back to our point of moving that double bond around, we come to the idea of resonance. This one was the original structure I, I drew. However, I could have just as well put the double bond there or there. So I have three structures whose only difference is the choice in which location I put the double bond. And therefore, those are three equivalent structures, real structure being an average of those three. So the, those are resonance structures where I can draw more than one correct Lewis structure for a given compound. This is our end of our tutorial on Lewis structures that obey the octet rule.